Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first episode of a show that I will gradually be able to pronounce reliably, Desi Pardesi Film Divane, which means uh, Indian and foreign film lovers, which is what has happened with the Yippie Kaye Mother podcast and our great fans. And that is to the point where we wanted to have uh, one of our biggest fans on the show. So Sean uh, and I are happy to welcome uh, Nishan. And uh, we're going to talk to him for a little bit, both about uh, why he thinks we're so great, because that's very important, and uh, also about a movie that he brought for us to discuss. So, hello, Sean, and welcome to Sean. Thank you, Drew, for the kind and nice introduction. And hi, great meeting you, and great meeting Sean live, too, on this uh, channel. Well, I'm very happy to meet you, because I've been reading your comments. and I know Drew will say this later, but it's so true is that as much fun you know drew started us by making us watch rrr in our um films we haven't seen category because we do different themes with the yippie Kaye mother podcast and we just all loved rrr ah! and um <laughs> it got so many views we decided to watch some more indian films that we but the film right from the very start we were guided almost entirely by user comments. Whoa! You know, so people are telling us what film to watch. And then sometimes when we pick the film or it comes up on the wheel, our back goes, oh, why are you watching that one? And we're like, <laughs> well, you guys recommended it to us. We're only watching, we make the occasional exception like Runway 34. But um, usually they're all recommended. And to be honest, as much as I enjoy doing the show, I love reading the comments you know, when we put the show up, you know, because not only do we get more recommendations for films, we often learn a lot about India and some things that happen in the film we get context for. And people have been very kind that, that we've often made mistakes about Indian culture and, and Indian customs and particularly pronunciations, which I'm going to avoid doing the entire time. And people have <laughs> been very kind in explaining things to us. You know, um, maybe we'll get into some of the, our major misunderstandings later. But first, you know, Nishan, tell us who you are and give us your backstory. Okay. So basically, like I, I talked to Drew about this earlier, the, the previous conversation. Uh, I, I, grew, I grew up in India in a place called Manglo. I'm actually born in Bombay, but grew up for brought up by my aunt and uncle. Uncle Ben, my aunt was a film buff, which is how my love for films grew. She would take me on the weekends, uh, Saturday, Sundays, Saturdays for the regional, like, you know, like Telugu, Tamil, and uh, you know, the local Kannada films. I'm, I'm from the state of Karnataka, which is a Kannada, the Kannada is the state language of that. Uh, of the state and the movie Kantara uh, is based in that state actually but Kantara is also uh, uh, just to give a little quick background Kantara is also very local to Manglo like uh, there is a very local culture too besides the state culture we have a very local culture too so Kantara actually touches that aspect of it in the movie uh, coming back to me quick as a quick um, uh, background then I grew my parents were abroad my dad was always abroad so I got to travel to Kuwait being they being in Kuwait and this exposed me to a lot of American and British movies in the 70s growing up when I should go there on my holidays so uh, like I told to mention to Drew last time uh, in India like growing up we had an English theater, but uh, because uh, English movies are more explicit uh, in some of the more adult themes, we were not allowed to go as children or, you know, till we came up till what you call 11th, what's the equivalent of 11th grade year. But before that, we, ha we ha have gone to a couple of other movies, which are kind of semi-adult kind of movies. But yeah, so that's where I got, but mainly through Kuwait is where I got my exposure to American movies. But uh, interesting thing is growing up in Manglo, I also got exposed to, in India, because we follow the British English system, right? So uh, our language, what we're taught in school is British English, but in pop popular, like when we meet friends at uh, home, it's mostly Amer American pop culture that we are, we are you know, exposed to. Like, so right from childhood, I was exposed Opposed to Superman, Batman comics. Gotcha. Now, having said that, I wanted to clarify one thing: not everybody in India gets that kind of exposure. You know, I right. mean, and even mine is a small town, 
but uh, because manglo has got a very diverse uh, uh, what it call and that is uh, the reason i'm bringing that up is also it helps you to understand it in context um, we have a lot of catholic and uh, direct muslim hindu and other religions too but primarily it's um, catholic and um, uh, hindus and muslims those are the primary three religion and i studied in a jesuit school saint elijah's like it was three generations going back from my father so we spoke wow. english all of us spoke english english is very fluent in mangalore and i think there are a lot of people who come from that background so so we also because of that because of the catholic uh, uh, christians tend to be having a more western i mean it's not um, uh they kind of more open minded more western kind of outlook and come growing up in my school with a catholic background i got exposed to a lot of that aspect too i'm just giving things that shape my outlook <laughs> no i i appreciate it that, that the the reason that i was so excited to have you on is because you come from uh you know your life crosses a bunch of different lines that give you a perspective on on a lot of different things and um I think uh you when we talked you also said that where you're from is maybe the most literate part of India as well. So it's um it's really oh, it's really the, No, that was the adjacent state, Kerala. Kerala Oh, that's Kerala. Okay. Kerala. Kerala is yeah, be careful. Like, We're going to get comments about that. <laughs> yeah, people are very sensitive. <laughs> well, I guess bring it on cuz you're going to do it anyway. Yeah. yeah. So now now here's no, the part I'm... where you um either tell us how pretty we are or we have a problem. How did you find us? Uh, on our show Yippee Kaye Mother podcast and how uh, you know what what works for you tell us why um you know you keep coming back and why you're one of the people uh, uh, there are a number of you out there who have been so enthusiastic and it's been thrilling for us to to have that kind of response yeah i got um, mainly through youtube the youtube kind of has got an <clears throat> sorry has got an algorithm uh, there used to be uh, there are two other um, the, uh, uh, americans who who are very popular on youtube one is called our stupid reactions i don't know if you have uh, sure. seen them and the uh, other one is there's a guy called jabi kwe he both they're both based in la and i guess uh, youtube algorithms they see your interest and based on that so when your podcast or youtube channel came i was very surprised and, and like you there are a couple of other people too i have subscribed to and but the interesting thing is i don't think there is uh, a kind of an ensemble cast of members like yours that about three four people uh having so many different uh, views you know and mm -hmm. uh, so i got introduced to you because probably by the youtube algorithm and i found your comments very interesting very um genuine the more the important thing is uh, i i think um uh users no matter you know irrespective of which country you come from people always like to hear genuine comments i mean of mm -hmm. course there are people who are a bit sensitive and they say when you give criticism and i'm sure you may face that some people get angry or annoyed because i know from the other youtube channels many of them uh, sometimes have given feedback saying hey you know tone down we are you know we're not familiar with the culture so we may say things that may not may offend you but that was not the intention so uh, so i you may come across that as time goes as much as your fan base grows so there are people who are very sensitive about it but sure. more people enjoy the honest comments that you have been giving you know and th there's a genuine uh, and we and see uh, we also see different perspectives right like what's very interesting is like when um, Sean do or Debbie and uh, you'll all speak i mean within that time frame uh, i keep wondering sometimes oh i mean what else is there for them to say and some you come out with something new and that's very interesting too i mean uh, and in some cases like uh, it gives a perspective that i didn't think of too you know and i said oh right. this is i mean i may not agree with it like you know and sure. sure any of the users but then you all don't agree within yourselves too right i mean you have <laughs> that is true uh, and that makes it all even more interesting especially when there are so many of you right and from an indian what happens is see american the movies have got global appeal because all over the world not now even in india growing up in india from the 60s like i think i told i mentioned to do uh, drew uh, when i was growing up my uncle used to talk about uh, his child 
childhood days and uh, going and seeing Douglas Fairbanks movies or wow. Ben Tintin American movies. And he used to tell me stories about that. And now again, this is not necessarily across India, but there are a lot of people, especially the uh, metropolitan cities in India, like Delhi, Bangalore, and smaller towns where they got good exposure to universities, colleges, and people have got, uh, so they will have this kind of experience too. But that's quite a big, you know, if you're talking of a billion population, even if you talk yes. percentage or small, that's a huge population still, you know. And uh, so that is how. So, uh, and that is why I, I started uh, responding and I liked your comments and then notice other fans too, kind. And from our perspective, we get excited that you're enjoying our movies, the, the our cultural the thing. So uh, it, it kind of becomes an interesting thing to see your perspective of how you view, uh, like, I mean, you also come to understand people of the country through films, right? Yes. I mean, when I was growing up American, when I started, uh, the funny thing is in Kuwait, the, one of the, you, you may start laughing about this, uh, what's that called? Uh, Family, family film, what's that? Uh, they used to give some regular famous stories that occur, like court cases and all that, like... Uh, oh, okay. Like, and then you kind of say, hey, they are reacting just like us. You kind of realize that movies kind of make you realize people are the same globally. Yeah. Uh, the clothing, what you call the external superficiality is there, what you call what I call the clothing or the cosmetic things. But beneath it all, people have the same emotions, they react to the same things. Otherwise, American movies wouldn't be popular so globally, you know. I mean, not just the action movies, I'm talking of even the emotional content movies too. You know? So well, that one, is the, yeah. You know, one thing I love about the Indian films, and I mention this all the time, is that I think American films have gotten so cynical, you know, and they're kind of afraid to get really emotional. And Indian films, people wear their emotions on their sleeve quite a bit, which I really enjoy. And also what I see is an enthusiasm for the process, you know, in the sense that it seemed, you know, people are seem to love it, you know, the movies. And I'm not talking about the audience. You can just tell from the filmmaking that, you know, people are, doing what they love, you know, the actors we see and all. And it's not just calculated so much of, particularly as American films have gotten more global, I think a lot of the decisions are being made by, you know, the corporations and all. And it seems to me that a lot of, the, a lot of in India is still being done by passionate filmmakers and actors, you know, who aren't afraid to go places aren't afraid to be emotional. And, you know, there's a lot of political and cultural differences in America too, which sometimes people complain about. But America has it easy compared to India with its many languages and its and its many religions, you know. And we weighed into that quite a bit. I know um, there were a lot of heated discussions when we did, um, what was the um, Hamlet one? Um, Hater. Oh, Hyder. I, I, I know that, you know, because it mentioned the um, war in Kashmir, you know, a lot of the comments were very angry. You know, there were a lot of, a lot of dispute about the Kashmir and there's other things. And one thing people kept correcting us all the time was, if you're raised in America, you think there's really only one person who ever lived in India. Right. And that person was Gandhi. Gandhi. And uh, so many people said, every time you talk about, every time we talk about Gandhi, people get so mad. It's like, that's all Americans ever talk about is Gandhi. You know, Gandhi didn't do it all. You know? Well, you talked about, you talk about how, you know, film is the way you get to know people and you get to know countries and Gandhi in, and this is not a criticism of his performance or anything, but Gandhi to Americans, to the West is played by a white actor. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it's really... To, to me, it's been it's been super exciting to to see these movies and so many different kinds of movies, and I have liked most of them. Um, some of them really quite love them, and the movie you mentioned uh, a little while ago that we're going to talk about today uh, is called Kantara. Uh, it is actually uh, set and from where you grew up. So I wanted to talk to you about that because when uh, I watched this movie yesterday for the first time, Sean actually saw it in the theater. We did an episode about that where Sean and Debbie and Ralph got to see it in the theater and found it very exciting. And uh, I also found it very exciting, but it was, it was an experience where there were a, a number of things 
that were very familiar as far as things I've seen in other Indian movies. Uh, there's questions of uh, people who get their jobs through influence and the relationships between the police, the forest police, and the people that they police. Um, there's uh, the differences in, uh, in, in social class based on wealth. I mean, the whole story is about a, a village and its landlord, but it's also called Kantara, uh, a legend. So it's really a movie about myth and folklore and learning about the demigods and and the rituals and all those things, which uh, I've heard the screaming may be a little bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> it's, it's this very authentic look at a world that I've never seen. And according to the comments on the last Kantar episode, a lot of people from India, even people who don't live that far away said, yeah, I, I don't know about this either. So, you know, when you watch a movie like this uh, with your perspective, does it, does it ring true in a lot of ways to you? Oh yes, I mean the what they showed. I mean, of course, there's a part. The uh, there's a bit of mythology. That part is a bit. That is for the cinema, cinema portion of it, cinematic kind of uh, thing. But overall, what they show is that you know the dance, the, the makeup, and uh, the uh, what you call the way the story. You know, they talk about um, the local goddess protecting um, their particular area uh, that is based on a certain belief in that uh, now where I grew up in Mangalore. Uh, uh, Mangalore itself, even actually there are some answers many of the older houses, they are like uh, tiled, uh, tiled roofed houses and all that. And now in the last 20, 30 years, you have a lot of apartments like any place around the world, right? But uh, traditional Mangalorean apartments like Goa and uh, Southern India, they had these uh, uh, tiled roof houses, you know, and um, many houses, they also have a separate room where they call, uh, they call, um, if you if you follow the dialect in there, they call it Bhuta, you know, Bhuta means ghost or spirit. Yes. It means um, it's kind of a good spirit meant to protect the, the family. You know, and uh, they do have uh, what you call a kind of a cultural event once a year. Now, in my house where I grew up, uh, we didn't have that. We didn't have that special room. But I remember that uh, scene, you know, where they show you that entire village, he's that scene where he dances, you know. Yeah. With the thing. Now, in the, in the full in the full costume and everything. Yes, in the full. Yeah. Costume. Okay. Yeah. So that really, uh, when I was growing up in my childhood, my uncle, they have these uh, huge cashew farms and they have this ancestral land, which is about one hour from Manglo when you used to go there. So as a child, he had taken me there along with, you know, I went with him and my auntie and they, and I was terrified as a kid. <laughs> I was frightened out of my wits because I was like, like you see those people standing the circle, like I was yeah. like a kid, and that guy would come with the. Wow. <laughs> it, it, it was. Uh, I don't remember that very clearly, but there is sufficient memory of it uh, that I remember as terrified. And one thing they have not shown that uh, that particular person or he or somebody else. I think there was another. There are, there's another person by his side. They have a kind of. Um, it's a very beautiful looking like a, a silver thing and a very fluffy kind of thin thing and they mm. come and they keep touching you with that yeah i think oh, yeah, okay. some kind of leaf but there it was something else but so to me that was like reliving that part of it but every wow. year in and around manglo they have that uh, the, that what you call custom of honoring the the local deity or uh, no I'm not a very religious person so I never got into that very much but even today in that Manglo and many of the areas it's not just Manglo I would say there's a lot what they call South Canada district or even a little beyond that you know there are people they follow that very religiously every year and the other thing is you remember the opening scene where he has the that's the buffalo race Yes. Oh, yeah. It is also held annually uh, in Manglo. They, and one of the places is very close to my house. It is in a paddy field, what we call the paddy, rice field or paddy mm -hmm. field. So they have these races uh, things. So those are all. So you've uh, seen these buffalo races. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Wow. Yeah. So so that pretty much captures the flavor of our my uh, local. But some part of it, those traditions are also there in Kerala and some of the other southern states. But those are all different variations. What he showed in the movie is kind of specific to Manglo and to the region around it. Now, I think there were comments that this isn't 
What they're doing here isn't necessarily traditional Hinduism. It's something that's more regional. Would you say this is older than Hinduism or is it just from a different region? No, it, I think Hinduism is really old. I think Judaism and Hinduism are considered one of the oldest religions in yeah. the world, right? Yeah. So these, uh, like with any uh, religion, practices evolve, right? Uh, customs and practices mm -hmm. evolve. And sometimes it, as people live in certain communities, certain um, rituals evolve from those communities. So I would say this must have evolved. I do not know how far back this custom goes to, mm -hmm. but it's somewhere, yeah, but yeah, comes up. I, from I was just surprised in the comments when we did our first episode, how many people were like, this was alien to them. Got you it. know, this was not something that they had experienced or they were familiar with. You know, right. so As I, and I was telling Drew last time that uh, even within the my state, Karnataka, other than the like the region around Mangalore, I do not know how, how far to be accurate, so I may be wrong. But how well, the commenters will let you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> beyond 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 that region, even people from the other parts of Karnataka within the state would not be familiar with this custom. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. Now let me let me talk about another part of this. Uh, as as I understand it, this movie was a big hit um, uh, across India. Right. And so that I know is unusual to have these movies like RRR and, and other movies that have broken out of their regional places and deserve to. Right. Uh, it's funny because this movie, um, I, I had heard a lot of hype about it. I had not seen it until yesterday. Um, and I haven't seen anything else by Rashab Shetty. And I think the only other Kannada movie that we've watched was uh, KGF Chapter One, uh, which mm -hmm. is obviously, let's call it spirited. And so this movie... I thought it was going to be weirder, frankly, not weirder because I didn't uh, recognize it, but it just be really disorienting. And because the first scene, uh, when you, the first section, when you meet this, the ceremony that you witness and they actually, they actually show Rishabh Shetty's character as a little boy watching it. So now I'll, I'll always think that it's you. And, um, you know, that was, that was very intense. I mean, watching the yellow makeup and the, 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 the screaming and the learning you know, who the demigods are and one of them will always forgive you and one of them will never forgive whoever trespasses against the village and you'll choke on blood and all that stuff. And then I felt like a lot of the movie, it wasn't as compelling because it was like, well, Rishabh Shetty's character is just kind of a, kind of a jerk and uh, he's, he's not, not a bad really person. He's not really smart either because it takes him a long time. He thinks the landlord's a good guy. Right, and and that's He's like the, and the, landlord, the landlord. The landlord is is you know playing a role that's been played by generations before him, and he's the one that's going to change it. And that forest officer, I can't remember the uh, the character's name, but the very tall, Morali. guy. Yeah, he becomes a hey, Morali. He becomes you know he's the enemy, and then you get to the end of the movie, and it's really satisfying the way everything comes together. The action is really crazy. Not that there aren't good action scenes and fights. The, I mean, the most striking visual thing in the movie until the end is definitely the Buffalo race. That is just yeah. gorgeous and really intense and feels very, very real. Like I didn't realize when they set a Buffalo race and they, they break out the timer, it was all the stakes were right there. It was very clear. And of course, that's when we first meet Rishabh Shetty's character and he's most concerned about getting the medal, which he, you know, deserves. But well, uh, I don't know. They, I didn't think he was the fastest. Maybe it's because he was in slow motion. Well, that's so true. It made it hard for us to judge it. But by the end of the movie, when he, um, I don't know if, I don't know what the right language is, is the right language that he became the demigod for a time that he, the demigod wrote on him, that the, um, that he, you know, was resurrected or possessed. I, I don't know, but. So part of the, the tradition of that, sorry to interrupt you. Part no, of, no, go ahead. The part of that. Um, the ritual is basically uh, when in our in the Tulu is the local language, and okay. when you go for these kind of things, they they say that the uh, demigod or the the spirit possesses the person. So yeah, 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 that is what they're showing because in these uh, events, and sometimes I've I don't know this is so far back. I told you after my childhood, and I was so terrified I refused to go for that. <laughs> and uh, uh, the thing is, like, um, they are. I from what I remember, this is my auntie and all the telling that they do some unique stuff. I believe I, I used to hear this as folklore, and I don't know. Um, uh, maybe they're telling this. My uncle and auntie were teasing me and telling me. Sure. Uh, uh, like they said that he can pass the sword 
Oh, through wow. his body at that stage when he's oh, possessed, okay. nothing will happen to him. <laughs> these are all childhood stories, you know, and I'm definitely, yeah. and I'm sure, hundred percent sure these are not real things. But, well, that's why. Uh, but that's why at the end, I, I wasn't, I wasn't sure if he had been killed. That's what, And yeah. then he was, he was dead, and then he was brought back to life, or what? But I also, I mean, in a way, I didn't care because that okay. was that was the end that was when you know good was going to conquer evil and you know anytime somebody who you've established as bad gets his head uh twisted all the way around i mean that's something that's satisfying about that so right. and, and you know like as a story as a movie it was kind of pretty much i've seen a lot of canada south indian movies with that story mm -hmm. you know so initially i too wasn't taken of course i liked the initial visuals of that opening scene uh, on the forest and you know and then i was thinking well, why is this? Why are people hyping so much about this movie? But I liked when I came to the end. Just like you, I kind of got the thing. I said he has done a marvelous job of using a folklore and imbibing it into the story, and also making it part of the story of seeking justice and fighting. You know, mm -hmm. he has used that folklore so well. So he merged that. When when I understood that, I kind of appreciated the movie. You know? Well, he also did it in a way that I don't know about you, Sean. I I, I didn't feel left out. No. Like it's a lot of new stuff for me to learn because I'm not from that region of India, never mind Indian. But uh, I felt like I was invited into this world and the stuff that was at stake was the same human stuff. And the things that were funny in the movie were funny to all of us. I mean, some of his uh, his gang of friends um, that he basically roams around with, and you know, and the guy who hides from his wife with the big teeth and all that stuff. I mean, you know, it's just it's funny without. To me, it's funny without being. You silly. know, it's funny. I didn't this time watching it, rewatching it, like when they're basically comparing that guy's wife to a cow. Oh, mm -hmm. look at the teeth, like in the opening scene, with all that overlapping dialogue and all. And what was really arresting, I, I really liked that first fight scene in the mud, where he tries to get the. Um, you know, when he's trying, when he's arguing that he won. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some great images, some great action. And to me, this is like, you know, what's it, uh, K, you know, KGF. In the sense that the hero is like this big, unbeatable guy, but he is beatable until the, um, he's possessed. But, you know, the first couple Indian films we had, including RRR, is about, you know, norm, for the most part, normal human beings that possess like, super superhuman skills like Bahubali, K you know, KGF and all. In fact, I think the first like normal film we saw was um Sardar Unum, you know, about the man The Sardar Udam about yeah. the massacre, yes. Yeah, and that mm -hmm. was the first like realistic film, you know, that we had where he's a realistic character. And I really love the early fantasy. It's sort of like historical superhero movies. You know, except, I mean, Kantara is set in modern day. But to me, which I found harder to understand, as Drew said, the human stuff was easy to understand, were some of the things about the forest, the rules guarding, regarding what is forest, what is private land, what you can do on both. But, you know, I mean, you know, I didn't understand the rules, but it didn't take me out of the movie. You know, right. I, I was still into the movie. In the state of Karnataka and many of the, like, even Tamil Nadu and even the other southern states, um, I'm not sure about North India, but I know that in the southern states, they have this uh, Yakshagana is in the olden days before the invention of TV and uh, you know, what do you call, uh, like in a kind of a drama, theater kind of. This was I, I, that was my understanding of it is it's yeah. essentially a style of drama. So okay. Yeah, so they have a style of drama and that is there in, across all these states, not just, not just, uh, I mean, that particular form has been imbued into this particular cultural thing, but the, on a broader scope that what you see there, they put the face paint and normally the Yakshadana is normally they have these Indian epics like Ramayana, Mahabharata, the story mm -hmm. of you know good the fight of good versus evil so the you have different characters painted and a lot of it is with eye expressions you know they and they paint their face depending upon the character they portray like demon would be more reddish and you know so the paint and all the expressions uh, and it also involves hands and gestures and stuff like that and so, my understanding is rishab shetty basically started his acting doing Yakshagana. Correct. Correct. So the movie is even more personal uh, and familiar yes. to him. It's, it's, 
Yeah, kind of really neat stuff. Really yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I just more of his yeah, it's important for me to tell you about this because that gives you the source of where that is coming from. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So any uh, any last words on a Kantara, a legend, other than I'll say I believe he's already started working on a sequel, so I'm not sure yes, what I that believe will be like. So. I thought Kantara he disappeared too. at the end. I guess right? he comes back. <laughs> he did, but he, he made a friend and then they both vanished. Is uh, is there is there anything you think you'd like us as uh, you know as as Westerners as I mean we've been doing this in months not years really exploring Indian movies. Is there anything you think we should take away from um, from this movie? Uh, because I you know I enjoyed it on a variety of levels, but I, I know there's so much that I miss by not knowing the language and and not knowing even what you've told us today. Yeah, I mean. The... I think this, you also get exposed to the local flora, or the which, you know, the type of, you know, the mm. palm trees and you know the settings of the village and uh, the paddy rice fields. That is very South Indian atmosphere, you know, where mm. we all grew up in. Um, but uh, but as a movie, so how both of you, how did you like it? I mean, you gave an overview, so um, I know. So did 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 you like it? Did you uh, what was that your? Well, I really I really liked it. You know, the first time I saw it, and um, I hate to say I cheated the second time, because when I watched it on Netflix, the default was the dubbed version, so okay. I saw it in English. But not everything was dubbed. Um, when he was speaking as the spirit, that was still in the native language. And the good thing about the dubbed version was it showed you, because uh, it still played the subtitles for the for the language version. And the dubbed words were completely different oftentimes yeah. than what was coming up in the subtitles. Yeah. But I, I really enjoyed the film. I felt that um, Chidi was um, really charismatic and an amusing guy. And um, I really liked his attitude. I mean, he's sort of like the hero, but he's a slacker too. He's right. like a tough guy, but he doesn't want to do anything. And I find that kind of character um, very appealing in movies he's sort of like um the trinity character in you know my name is trinity the western yeah, sort of a you lazy know, brawler yeah. a lazy brawler type yeah, of guy i got it you know so I've, i found that very enjoyable and it is reminiscent of of um kgf too part one which we saw where that guy was similar he had a little more ambition but he really didn't care he never really felt threatened he seemed to be doing what he wanted because that's what he wanted to do. Right. And, and one to, thing, Sean, that you mentioned, which I forgot to tell you that time, you mentioned that you were a bit confused about the the, the people in the forest and then the mm -hmm. authorities uh, coming in and trying to say this. Uh, now, this is um, not so, I wouldn't say it's happening right now so much in Southern India. Uh, I may be wrong, to, but what traditionally what happened is post-partition era, there's a lot of people who were um, the, the, the villages or even uh, what do you call tribes who were still in the forest or you know if you go to northeast india that is still a thing like you'll find that a lot in northeast india it used to be that so what used to happen there's some small communities who we would live off the land you know mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so post partition there was a bit of uh, uh, cultural uh, kind of a little clash trying to get people you know uh, into the uh, what you call more modern thing or but there was also a kind of resistance saying that uh, uh, many of us we have a certain tradition that we have followed from our great great grand parents and um, we the kind of so in a way that uh, he has brought that little aspect into okay. the world you know, so that is what, so there was a clash or even in this part of Northeast India, where this is still a bit of a clash with the government. There are local tribes in Northeast India who kind of resist change. And they say that we are, we don't want to be part of your, you know, the bigger thing. So now, what, this could be, yeah. My question now, are why are they trying to preserve the forest? Is it for ecological reasons to protect the wildlife or why are they um oh uh, yeah because uh 
technically speaking, uh, I mean, it's part of the religious. If, if you notice, uh, you must be knowing in Hinduism, there's a lot of deities and, you know, yeah. animals. A lot of animals are like deities, worshipped as deities. Uh, part of the, the Hindu thing is, uh, I mean, I don't know some ages or eons ago, whoever the sages were, like, because all these are come down from people who, you know, what they call sadhus now. And they kind of uh, created these um, stories so that people take care of um, nature and mm, respect okay. nature. So all this thing comes stems from that. And uh, which, if you took look at today's context, when you look at it in an intellectual context, it is like you're taking care of, um, to giving equal respect to your to nature. Like everything that's nature should coexist. To way. So I guess in those days, being living in the forest or living more in the rural part, this must have come from that tradition of, you know, thing. Yeah, I was wondering. I mean, and we had a similar thing in, of course, the United States, where as we moved, we moved the Indians who lived off the land mm -hmm. and we tried and we did force them into reservations, basically made them give up their hunter-gatherer lifestyle and they weren't all hunter-gatherers there were right. farmers and everything but right. Right. people think that because of the great plains they were mainly right. following the herds of buffalo and all and killing the buffalo certainly helped the, our government's plans of controlling right. those people and all but right. that was nothing ecological about that it was just so that other people could take the land and resources but that doesn't seem to be the case here it seems like they you know, they want to preserve. Of course, in the movie, the landlord wants all the land. Right. You know, no, but that's, I mean, that's they, yeah, the, that is there. But there, of course, uh, they need to preserve it also because that's a uh, source of sustenance, right? I mean, yeah. uh, it, it is. So they are concerned. I mean, in, when you are in that kind of environment, when you're growing up in that for them, that is their livelihood. So that yeah. that will be the primal driving factor, you know? Well, I want to say, as far as my reaction to the movie, I, I didn't really think of this before, but um, KGF Chapter One, uh, it, it's it's like it's silly, it's fun, it's silly. I didn't really connect with it. I I like silly and I like silly action. I know which movies I prefer that style, neither, neither. 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 but I didn't honest, really neither. connect with it. I didn't love I it. Couldn't anything, connect but, with it too. Yeah, but until it became about something, until it became okay. about we're going to free these slaves, we're going to fight, you know, for a good cause, and that's kind of the feeling that I got out of this was when he, you know, cause he, he threw elbows and knees at people that deserved it and stuff, but he basically took on an army of thugs to, to save yeah. his people. And okay. they lost, uh, I cannot remember his name. The guy who was, uh, it was in the costume Guruva, uh, Guruva. I think yeah. it's been some time since. Yeah. So I, I, and, and, um, and then of course one of his friends is killed in the last brawl and everything. But yeah, yeah. when I said, I thought it was going to be weirder, I think I was expecting more of a, a Tumbad, vibe because oh, that movie is sort of disorienting all the way through and you're also right. learning the the myth as it goes which is much more you know invented obviously but i realize i think what and you correct me if i'm wrong i think what kantara kind of is is it's a local folklore masala movie Correct. because yeah, it has woven that folklore into the masala yeah movies. it's got all those different tones Correct. and all those Correct. things yes. and those tonal changes no they don't I don't know. I don't notice them as much anymore. It's just part of the experience. But it, it is yeah, the other it's such thing. a big movie in so, so many ways. Now, there's so. one thing. Good you brought this up about tonal change. Uh, I think I've, there's so many times I wanted to comment it and put it in the comments. But uh, I mean, but this is what I wanted to tell you about the tonal shifts that you notice in Indian movie. Please. Uh, you've got to understand the cult cultural context of it. Now, you know, when India post-independence, like uh, India was a kind of developing country. And for the average person, going to the cinema was his uh, entertainment, you know. And mm -hmm. a lot of people, for a lot of people who are very poor, like, you know, those uh, one and two hours, and that's also for probably the length of the movie, that two or two and a half hours would give them total uh, relief and total, I mean, enjoyment, like, you know, and, mm -hmm. and at a very, very reasonable price, they could come to the theater and have, forget and just enjoy the, forget about everything, have a laugh, enjoy the thing. So the movies, traditional movies in India, 
has all the elements of music, song, dance, you know, and humor, comedy. And that's why sometimes you may get shocked that you'll see a comedy scene followed by a very tragic scene, <laughs> which yeah. uh, right. Western movies tend to focus on one aspect of that, whereas Indian movies tend to have. But the whole idea is that it comes from that aspect where the appealing to the whole is, audience. Yeah, basically, mainly it is for the large, it's not just for the people who are rich or, you know, thing. it's meant for the every person should come and enjoy the movie. And, you know, there's a, still a large population who are, you know, so it's mainly meant for everybody to come in and have a great time. So that is the idea between the tonal shifts that you see. Well, I also think that rejecting those tonal shifts, like them being weird to us, that feels almost more American than anything because no, there are no. plenty of other countries. Like I, I love movies from South Korea and there are movies that, like if you think of the host um, uh, that from the director of Parasite, that's a monster movie. So you have in a very short amount of time, a monster kills people and kidnaps uh, the uh, the daughter of this family. And then they're at a memorial for the people who were attacked and it turns into a weeping slapstick crazy scene nice. and it's the same kind of tonal whiplash that an okay. audience you know like us is going to go whoa i noticed that whereas for their audiences it, you know it, it's just it's kind of all in there which i which i think is really fun right, right. right well yeah. cool well thank you very much for uh, for coming on uh this is the oh, first time we're doing this his favorite american films oh we're getting we're getting there we're getting oh, there. okay uh i i hope to do more of these and um i I'd, I'd love to continue the conversation with you and continue um to to produce uh episodes that make you want to comment and make you want to talk to all of us and uh, i'm really thrilled that you joined us but uh as as you know because i uh we have essentially two shows. One of them is the one about Indian movies. And then the other one is the one that we're not really, you know, getting an audience. Uh, but part of that is when we talk about what we've watched and what we'd recommend this past week, that sort of thing. Is there anything that you have watched recently that you think we should watch? And it can be Indian or, or anything else. Is there anything that we should, we should look at? Because I've had some good conversations with you already and you have such an interesting taste in films and, uh, and are so thoughtful about them. So I'd be really curious. Uh, and just one correction I wanted to meet, I saw in that email, you said my favorite is Alien. My all-time favorite of all-time favorite movie of any genre is Godfather Part 2. Oh, that's a good choice. That's, that's a good part choice. Part 2 is my, it's like, uh, it's my, you know, I don't know if you saw Paramount's The Offer, the series Paramount. Oh, yeah. Sean watched it. I haven't seen it yet, but I, oh, I heard it was great. It's yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, and it's astonishing that the movie ever got made. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know? oh yeah. I mean, but they have done such a great job. I couldn't believe that they could make a series so interesting about making a movie, <laughs> and the performances, and uh, I mean, the story, the backstories are just astonishing. Like uh, the one of the most hilarious. I'm sorry if I'm spoiling it, but uh, it's just a. Uh, Small no, go ahead. When they call Al Pacino the shrimp. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I really think you could probably make a season of television about every single one of Francis Ford Coppola's movies. You could oh, do yes. that for yeah. everything from The Outsiders to Apocalypse Now, probably to Jack. I mean, just just everything because uh, you know of his personality and the challenges and all that kind of stuff. So I, I think there's they could do more seasons of and that. And let's congratulate were. Al Pacino on becoming a father <laughs> again. I think. At oh the, yes. At, yeah, at eighty three. He has. Yeah, he be, can have a child, but can he lift it? You know, so. <laughs> uh, I don't question. know if you saw the news. Uh, Robert De Niro is the first one to. I believe De Niro himself just got a kid. Uh, yeah, he'll, yeah. He'll, right? he'll be having at it at seventy nine. Yeah, so yeah. Al Pacino yes. beat him. Al Pacino beat him. <laughs> yeah, and uh, one of the. I mean, I know this is like a kind of a light-hearted. I wouldn't say three idiots, but it's a kind of a like that movie. It's on Netflix. It's called Mimi. You know, uh, Mimi, uh, M I M I. Okay. Uh, it, it was a nice, entertaining, but with a social movie, but very lighthearted. But at the same time, it talks about um, an interesting topic, and there's an American angle to that movie story too. So you'll come All to right. know. I don't want to spoil it. You. You'll come to know. Uh, I will check it out. Thank you. Uh, yeah. The movie which I liked recently was Blood, uh, Blood and Gold. I don't know if you'll have seen it. Or not. Oh, I want to see that. Yes. Anything uh, where Nazis I, suffer makes me happy. So uh, I felt it was uh, Quentin. It's not exactly, but it was. It had shades by the music of uh, Sergio Leone and uh, Quentin mm -hmm. Caroni. I mean, not like I said, it's not really. But you, you get that feeling. It's in that kind of. Uh, 
genre type of filmmaking yep. kind of thing. but it's Very real cool. fun i loved it yeah. good well that's definitely that's been on my list that and sisu were the yeah. ones that i wanted to see so <laughs> okay. all right thank you so much you okay, did you did you great so i was really thrilled and um uh, of yeah, course yeah. Uh, i'll talk to you soon okay. and uh thank you very much you have a good thank evening you. thank you so much thank you very much it was great to me talking to sean and you too yeah, yeah i wish awesome. Debbie was here so yeah, yeah okay. me too well we'll get her we'll get her, we'll get her. yeah okay. all right sean have i'll talk to you day. shortly and have okay. a great weekend too <laughs> thanks you too okay bye, bye.